judge. He was the judge, yeah. <laughs> Jake, and the lawyer became the judge. In a lot of the towns I was in, it was usually either Take or it was Yokozuna at that time. We miss the Yoke. But uh, there was other charges that you could be brought up on. Like, you know, gimmick infringement. Or, you know, going when you're like an early match, just because it's a good crowd, you go real long. And all the cats who are on late have to rush to the bar to get happy. I mean, like last call. <laughs> <laughs> um, in my experience, it's always been a lot better when the boys produce themselves. You know, when we look after ourselves instead of waiting for it to trickle down from Stanford, Connecticut. So it was just something that came up. I don't know if it's still going on, but it was really uh, prevalent in our era. Absolutely, it does not go on anymore. Um, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the day, in this new day and age with uh, uh, bullying and all, and all of these uh, things that are that are the topic of the day, uh, uh, and, and with WWE becoming uh, a publicly traded company, uh, wrestlers court went by the wayside. I think. Yeah, well, I, I I knew it was uh, wrestlers court was dead when there was actually a clause in your contract that disallowed sexual intercourse, including with your wife. <laughs> <laughs> that was part of the wellness program. So, I said, what the Well, Kevin, they threw an extra clause in for me, having been really familiar with the wellness program. <laughs> and you were allowed to have sex in rehab. <laughs> so, I did, I times in, I got girlfriends all over the Europe. <laughs> I, remember, I remember the one time I talked to you, you, you just got a rehab. I said, so how'd rehab go? You go, the fucking bitch from Hole, the drummer, was in there. <laughs> Drug addicts need love too. <laughs> oh my God, I think it used to be here. This is the, you know, Glasgow's always been a great city. We used to actually back in the day, we used to run Aberdeen also. But uh, yeah. I remember, I remember the, the coldest May day of my life was in Aberdeen. They, they took us to the North Sea. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> I believe Aberdeen is a building where they had the trailers that we were dressing in inside the building, and somebody took a shit in one of the showers. <laughs> bam Bam. Yeah, it was Bam Bam, man. You guys took a piece as well. Rest in peace. Thanks for shitting in the shower. <laughs> yeah, sorry, my question actually was. <laughs> yeah, it's for Scott, actually. Scott. Uh, in either WWF or WCW, was there any talk whatsoever about you possibly uh, being given a world title run? And, sorry, second, so, second, world title run, Scott. Second, quick question is, uh, have you ever considered, considered going into movies like Kevin? Thank, Thank you. Take money, Russell. Yeah, we're filming at the Hill. 317, bring your wife. <laughs> you're better than the other guys and I want one, I want a couple of them. But it, it means it, making more money. Ultimately it's more weight in your bag, you know. I mean I, I never yeah, I never got the opportunity. I think I had like three title matches in my whole career. You know, so that was cool with me. I always considered myself like a utility player and able to play any position and I was happy with where I was at. I will personally say that Scott Hall is the greatest worker wrestler never to be a world champion. <laughs> Jesus Christ. 
Christ, I gotta work with this fucking sun back fixer. <laughs> but you know what? If, if it wasn't for fucking Scott's patience and his friendship, I wouldn't be where I was because he fucking taught me how to fucking work and I worked at it. Yeah, you're my fucking boy, man. Yeah, I second that. I would I wouldn't be shit without Scott Hall. That's love right there, guys. Yeah, we'll go for one in the middle. This guy over here. Um, just wanted to know if you guys, not to drag up what was brought over there, but if you guys didn't go to WCW, do you think that Hulk Hogan would still be relevant? I'm not asking to bury him. I, just, I, 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 I saw, we all saw Hulk, what, last Saturday? Yeah, Saturday. You know what? Fucking Hulk is, is Hulk. And I watched that motherfucker go toe to toe against the rock, and everybody in that building in Chicago that was on, on the fucking WWE side was like, well, this is going to be 90 10 rock. And they got out there, and it was about 95 5 Hogan. So. Yeah. And, then, and then Hulk proceeded to take rock to school in Toronto at WrestleMania. Yeah, you know, and I, I watched Hulk come back and steal two manias, and one of them was against fucking Vince, who can't fucking shoot gum and shit at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, you know, Hulk, I think if, 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 there's a, if there's somebody on this planet that's the most underrated worker, it's Hulk. And it, I mean, fucking, as we always say up here, that motherfucker can play on our team. Because there's so many of them. Uh, that was the verdict that came down in Restless Court. Yeah. <laughs> Shit in her back. So Medusa comes in to, to the WWF. And she's kind of got a little bit of an air about her, you know. So we take a pie tent from catering and put it in the shower in the corner. I have nothing to do with this. And I'm not kidding you. 20 guys shit in this pint. <laughs> you can buy to it the, the, to the point where you had to carry it to put it in your bag with two hands. <laughs> Robbie Steiner, as you guys know as Rick, took that fucking pile of shit, put it in her bag, Zipped it shut and did like the old easy bake fucking chicken. <laughs> chicken bake. She came back from the ring, opened her bag. It was full of shit. She no sold it. She didn't fucking. She didn't flinch. Didn't do anything. And everybody just sat there and went, "She's one of us." Yeah. <laughs> we'll leave her alone. And she and, and from that day on. That's she, how she handled that. Yeah, she was gold. But she kind of had an attitude, so she got she got the you know, got the shit out of the stick, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't make anybody sick. Uh, basically, it goes like this. <laughs> There's an unsung hero type wrestler named Jerry Lynn. Some of you may have heard of him. Some of you. <laughs> When I, when I first started, uh, I moved to Minnesota from Florida, and I made a name for myself, and I got my first break in, uh, working with Jerry Lynn, and it was his retirement match earlier this year. Um, and it was very important to me to be a part, a part of this match. Uh, and uh, I was, th there was another guy, uh, it doesn't matter who it was, he was in the corner, and uh, in position for the Bronco Buster. Now, little did I know that the turnbuckle was exposed behind him, and I told him to move. So when he moved, I came in, I usually come in at a 45 degree angle, and I came in a little bit too horizontally, and basically I ripped myself a new asshole. <laughs> uh, That's okay, that other one was getting worn out. <laughs> I'm <laughs> 
asking for two stitches in that motherfucker for years. And this is the honest to God's truth. I still feel a stitch up in there. But, uh... Take care of that later for you. Uh, so, like... Okay. It's a, it's a funny story, but the, the truth is, is I almost bled out and died from it. Uh, and... I did not, I had to go, I had to go, I'd be rushed to the hospital, and I had to have an emergency surgery called a sphincterplasty. And uh, I almost had a colostomy bag. I don't know if anybody here knows what a colostomy bag is. We called Brett, and I was in there close to Brett, and I said, hey, it's pretty sweet here, man. We get to do whatever we want. You know, come on down. He chose to stay. But it's, to me, as when I saw the match and what went down and heard the background, um, I think they did the right thing. I think Sean and Baby Earl and the office did the right thing. We're not going to let you take our belt to another company, Brett. And so we don't care how cool you think you are. And I'm a big Bret Hart fan, but, you know, it's not okay, Brett. Um, the pay-per-view was in Canada, granted. But if people here watched it in Scotland, you kind of forget that it's in Montreal, right? It's just another pay-per-view event. I think Brett was a little caught up in it being in Canada and being in Canada. I don't think Brett did business, so like they said, they did business for him. I, uh, well, I was just going to say that uh, the, the downside of that entire thing was the conversation eventually led to Scott having a favorite nations contract, or uh, favorite nations uh, clause in his contract, and we both, once... Uh, I had the same representation that, that Scott did, and I, I immediately had it also, in order for fucking Brett to come in. Brett came in at about 2.5, which was probably about four or five times more than he'd ever made in a year when he came into WCW. So, you know, you might have got fucked in Montreal, but you got paid like a motherfucker when you came to Atlanta. I, and that's because these two motherfuckers right here, and we're clicked. So if, 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 if there was some, uh, if, if there was some assassination fucking thing in Daly Plaza, we were in the book depository. <laughs> I promise you that. I uh, to, for anybody that's wondering what the most favorite, favorite nation clause is, it means that nobody can come in and make more than these guys. So, I mean, just for anybody that was wondering what that meant. And as far as this Montreal screw job, I have a whole, I have a different take. I'm a little bit of a conspiracy theorist. Oh, get the fuck out of town, right? No, um, and I even, I, I even confronted Brett about this. I'm like, come on, Brett. You mean to fucking tell me that you didn't see that coming a mile away when fucking they called the, uh, when, when you're uh, putting the match together and they had Sean putting in your own finish after you wouldn't, after you wouldn't do the job? Come on. I, honestly, honestly, in my opinion, I think it's really possible that, uh, that Brett was in on it and Vince was in on it I, and everybody else was the fucking marks. This is, this is the one thing I see. Vince McMahon had the federal government up his ass on, on, on like 28 counts of steroid abuse, steroid distribution. That motherfucker no sold everything that ever happened. But yet on the documentary, he comes out selling the fucking punch that Brett hit him with. <laughs> and, it, and, it's their, and it's their fucking take. But you don't see the punch. You don't see the take, but it's, it's just like, come on. You don't hear the audio, even though they were mic'd. So, I mean, you know, they very well could be. It's a work, work, work. Everything's a work. The Gov worst. government's a work. There's a bunch of fuckers out, out right now looking at a big fucking owl. Nobody, you, get, you know what I'm talking about. Bohemian Grove? Who Bohemian Grove? Look it up on Google. Okay. <laughs> Hey, we got some more questions. Did you like that, didn't you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's a long car journey. It's a good first person to ever put The Undertaker in a hole. Yes. We're wrestling at some Thank dark... Thank fucking God. <laughs> We're wrestling at some dark match, which means an untelevised match. At a, before everything went live, we taped all the TV shows, and it took forever. There'd be 50 matches. 
So it'd be like one match you cared about, ten matches you didn't care about, another match you cared about. So me and Taker are wrestling. And when we go to the ring, they say, just keep going until we wiggle the tie, which means uh, Warrior's done doing his interviews. Because Warrior's back there going, to all the old <laughs> you he's, he's in the interview room getting all pumped up. Like, ah. Uh, <laughs> I checked in the hospital, and, and I was there, and I told the lady, you know, I had to wait in the emergency room, blah, blah, blah. And I remember telling the lady, yeah, I, I said, I have to detox on booze, you know, I'm injecting really bad. And I said, I got a little cold. And the lady came back and said, no, honey, you have double pneumonia and your heart's in atrial fibrillation. She said, you ain't going anywhere. And so I thought, okay. And then the doctor came in and this dude goes, you're going to die. <laughs> and I remember thinking, wow, where'd you learn that bedside manner, bro? Because I said, you don't know anything about me, college boy. I will wait for you in the parking lot. <laughs> And I uh, said, so you're going to die too? <laughs> but I remember, you know, after thinking about it, wow, it kind of sucks, but yeah, I've had a pretty good run, you know, well. And then in around the curtain walks Danny Spivey, who was like, uh, I started wrestling with him years ago. We're not really good friends, but I know him. And he works for the WWE as a sober companion. Like, he came walking around the corner of the little curtain, and he goes, remember me? And I got tubes in me and an oxygen came out. And he goes, I said, yeah, what's up? He goes, we're leaving for Houston in three hours. <laughs> and uh, Spivey escorted me from the hospital there to a medical facility in Houston where I got heart surgery. They put a gimmick pacemaker defibrillator in me. And then, uh, then they said, and while you're there, go ahead and swing by the psych hospital, see if they can help you out. <laughs> so I ended up staying about eight or nine weeks in Houston there. And uh, I don't know, man. Uh, you know, that, that didn't take. And I kept relapsing and kept relapsing. And, and I don't remember what happened. I'm sitting at home, I'm drinking vodka for breakfast. The phone rings and I never answer. And it's Dallas and he's obnoxiously happy. The dude's so, <laughs> he's, he's so positive. And it's a shoot, he's that way for real. And he's like, hey brother, hey brother, hey brother, hey bro, bro, bro. <laughs> you know, like come stay with me and everything. And I thought, well, rehab, go stay with Dally. Ah, let me try this, because I tried rehab wasn't working and I'm not sure what happened and I get asked this a lot and I wish I know I wish I knew what what I did that was different because I would tell everybody I know who's struggling but I just don't want to drink anymore because when I do I drink I mean we have pounded some booze together me and Big Kev and Kev's never really had a problem with it where it's always an issue for me and I'm all for drinking don't take me wrong I encourage people to drink you know I'm just one of the guys who can't do it successfully but you know, and, and Dallas was there for me and gave me a safe place to stay. I mean, Kev had given me the same offer, and he only lives about 50 miles north of me in Daytona. But Kev's a family man, and, you know, and, and Dallas is there by himself, so it seemed like a better fit. And, in fact, I enjoyed it so much that I'm renting a place about two blocks from Dallas's now and, and flying in and out of Orlando. I still have a home in Florida, but I'm living in Atlanta for now, and it's mostly because of Dallas. I mean, Pac started the ball rolling, and Kev was there, and I mean, I've had a lot of people been, been on my side for a long time, but it just wasn't taken. And, and by the grace of God, you know, I ain't had a drink so far today. I mean, I don't know what time it is. But I made it so far. I mean, the chances of me drinking tonight are pretty slim because Kev won't let me. So uh, I'm just really happy to be where I'm at right now. Thank you.
Thanks for the next one. I was annoyed. Are you still out, man? My foot was well annoyed. I was sitting there. Right you guys have a good time? Yeah, it was yeah. great. Thanks, man. Thanks for coming out. Thanks, brother. Thanks for coming out. I hope you had a good time. Thank you, my man. Fellas! What's up? Yeah, Paul Davis. Yeah, Paul Davis. Call of Divas, but ours is going to be total dicks. <laughs> I don't want to say anything about it because you're a lot bigger than me, all of you. Yeah, total douchebag. <laughs> Sorry, Colgis. How'd you get it's stuck holding the camera, yeah. man? Make him hold it for a while. <laughs> I'm the ball up. I'm the ball up. Who shit my sick? I'll give it to Nice to see you, brother. That's amazing. Thanks for coming out, man. Hope you had a good time. <laughs> No, all the time, all day long. I switched to these dental tools now. They got like a little brush here and everything like that. But they, you can't get a lot of distance on them. But so when I'm going to flip, I use wood. And, but for just every day, but like, I don't know, 10 a day, maybe more. I don't have a lot of good habits, but dental health is good. My dental hygiene is respectable. Yeah. Thanks, bro. I keep give, trying to give people no, shit away. No problem. On the nitro, you know the best nitro. Fucking great job. Excuse me, French. No, you're not going to offend me. Because no one swore away. You know, we knew from some reason that there'd be a little booze for all of it. Everybody was great. Thank you very much for tonight, by the way. Thank you, buddy.